Hello everyone and welcome to Digimento Educations and in this video we provide solutions to paper 1 which is a general common paper to all the streams of UGC NET which was conducted on July 8, 2018. Right, so without wasting any time just uh, get to question 1. Look at the question 1. So basically this is a paper that one of our students sent us. So uh, questions may not be very clear but we will try to update this video as soon as the official question paper official answer key is released. Right now we have put a team to solve these uh, question papers. We have put in a lot of effort. But anyway if you find any answer wrong, any uh, topic if you think has been discussed incorrectly, you can just uh, put it in comments and we will look uh, forward, we will look up on it. Right, so look at the first question, which of the following set of statements best describe the nature and objectives of teaching? So this is a question from Teaching Aptitude, they are asking you to uh, select the correct statement. So look the first statement, teaching and learning are integrally related, which is correct. So the first statement is uh, the correct statement, right, this is, this is going to be right, correct. Look at the second statement, no difference between teaching and training. So this is a wrong statement, there is a difference between teaching and training. Okay, there is a lot of difference. Teaching is actually a learning process. Okay, training is to uh, let someone just be trained or be uh, well versed in a manner of doing things in a procedure. So this is wrong. Concern of all teaching is to ensure some kind of transformation in students which is correct. All good teaching is formal in nature, which is not correct. Teaching can be formal or informal in nature, right? A teacher is a senior person. This is also not always true. Generally, it is true and morally it is true, but not always true uh, in absolute sense. So, this is not a correct statement. Then, uh, this one is going to be correct statement. Teaching is a social act, whereas learning is a personal act, right? So, the correct option is going to be option 3, which is A, C and F. These three statements are correct. Right, now move to the next question. Which of the following learner characteristics is highly related to effectiveness of teaching? So, out of the given options, see peer group, family size or educational status of the parents is not going to affect effectiveness of teaching. Okay, that is not going to make a difference. Although, prior experience of the learner is going to make a difference to the effectiveness of teaching or effectiveness of learning of the student. Of, right? Correct. So, the correct option is going to be option 1. Right, move to the next question. In the two steps given below, set 1 indicates the method of teaching and set 2 provides the basic requirement for its effectiveness. So, you have to just uh, match the correct options. So, lecturing is basically content delivery in a lucid language. Lucid means clear. So, lecturing is a content delivery in a clear language. See, content is available in the books also, in um, other mediums also. But lecturing basically involves delivery of that content in a understandable, in a clear language, lucid language. Right. Now, discussion in groups. What does this do? Discussion in groups is actually theme-based interaction among participation participants. Right. So, this is actually uh, theme-based interaction means you are discussing, you are talking about some particular theme, particular topic and interacting. Right. Brainstorming. See, discussion and brainstorming are two different things. Brainstorming is production of large number of ideas. Okay. Brainstorming is when a number of people, group of people sit down and produce a large number of ideas. Uh, then in later stages, they are going to be refined. Okay. Refined and put in use. That is what brainstorming is. Programmed instructional procedure. This is small step presentation with feedback provided feedback provided. So, D is going to match with 1. So, the correct answer is going to be 3521 which is option 3. So, the correct answer here is option 3. Right, move to the next question. From the list of evaluation procedures given below, identify those which will be called formative evaluation. This word is formative, not scanned very nicely. So, uh, anyway, it is formative evaluation. Indicate your answer by choosing from the code. Right, so they want you to identify that out of the given options, which will be called formative evaluation. What is formative evaluation? Basically, they are asking that. So, if you look at the options, so, look at option B. During interaction with students in the classroom, teacher provides corrective feedback. This is formative evaluation. Formative evaluation means that teacher is evaluating based on some format. Okay. So, this is this B option uh, is formative evaluation. Teacher clarifies the doubts of the students' class itself. This is formative evaluation. And the last option, 
which is learned as motivation is raised by the teacher through a question answer session. This is also a formative evaluation. So the correct option is going to be B, D and F which is option 4. So the correct answer is going to be option 4. Right. So all these questions are from teaching aptitude basically you might have studied all these. Now this is an assertion reason type question. So assertion is all teaching should aim at to ensure learning should aim to ensure learning. Right which is a correct statement uh, of course teaching should aim at ensure learning that is what teaching is for and reason is all learning results from teaching which is a wrong statement see it is not uh, right to say that all learning results from teaching only right learning can uh, learning can result from your own effort also from books also not only from teaching so uh, a is true but r is false which is option 3 so the correct answer is going to be option 3 for this one right move to the next question so they've given you four types of research fundamental research applied research action research and evaluative research and they need you to match them to what happens in these kind of research so if you look at fundamental research it is actually developing an effective explanation through theory building this is what happens in fundamental research applied research is exploring the possibility of a theory for use in various uh, situations Action research is improving an existing situation through use of interventions and evaluative research is finding out the extent of perceived impact of an intervention. Right. So this is what happened in evaluative research. If you look at this, this is going to be 2, 4, 3, 1, which is option 1. So the answer is going to be option 1 for this question. Right. Move to the next question. Which of the sets of activity best indicate the cyclic nature of action research strategy? So uh, this is, they, they're asking you that how do you move in uh, in this action research strategy? What What is the course of action that you follow? So firstly you plan, then you act, then you observe the uh, result of your action and then you reflect upon it, reflect upon the observation, okay? So the correct order is going to be plan, act, observe, reflect, which is option 4. So the answer is going to be option 4. Right, move to the next question. Which of the following sequence of research steps is nearer to scientific method? So if you just uh, go through all the options. Uh, this option 3, defining a problem, identifying the cause, defining population, drawing sample, collecting data and analyzing results. This is closer, nearer to scientific method. This is what happened in scientific method. So the correct answer for this question is going to be option 3. Right. Look at the next question. The problem of research ethics is concerned with with aspect of research activities. So uh, this problem of research ethics, it is basically related to evidence based research reporting. Okay, research ethics means there are some ethics to follow in research. Okay, yeah, there's some morals you look up to, right? So uh, out of the given activities that are being done in uh, research, Right, so following the prescribed format of a thesis, this is not going to harm your ethics, right? Data analysis, defining population, all these are not going to come in way of your research ethics. But evidence-based research reporting, this is this is concern, this is a concern related to pro research ethics. Why? Because see, for this evidence, you have to conduct some uh, some research or some experiments on a particular population which is actually uh, against this research ethics, right? Fine, so the answer anyway is going to be option 4. Look at the next question. In which of the following activities, potential for nurturing creative and critical thinking is relatively greater? So participation in a workshop, participation in a workshop has the highest potential for nurturing creative and critical thinking. Right. Uh, so move to the next question now. Look, question 11. So there, this is a question from paragraph base. So this is a RC comprehension, reading comprehension. So what you do is you read this paragraph, you just pause this video, read this paragraph, okay? And uh, then you try to answer the questions that follow, right? So you can just go through this paragraph. I am not going to read this here. So move to the question. So according to above passage, which of the following are indicative of the fourth dimension? So if you have read this paragraph, right, you find the answer that uh, aspirations of people, economy in the global context and strategic interests. So this, all this is given in the paragraph. You can just find it. So the correct option is going to be option three, right? All these are indicative of the fourth dimension, right? More productive employment demands, more productive employment demands, pervasive use of technology. So the correct answer is going to be option one. 
uh, absence of technology would lead to absence of technology would lead to wastage of precious natural resources low value addition and hurting the po poorest most right so the answer is going to be option 2 for this question 13 Going to the next question, advantage of technical technological inputs would result in lifting our people to a life of dignity. So this is a very simple problem of RC. You just go through the paragraph and you can find the answers. So there's one strategy that you can follow uh, by attempting these RC type of problems. That is, you just go through the questions first, okay? They're given five questions related to this paragraph. So, you go through these five questions first so that you have in your mind that what are you looking for. If you read the paragraph first, what happens is you go through the paragraph first completely. Then you go through the questions. Then for each question, you refer back to the paragraph that wastes a lot of your time in reading. Right? So, what you should do is just go through the questions first. So that in back of your mind, you know that what are you looking for. Then when you read the paragraph, just, just mark with pencil. Just mark the possible answers that you think that these are going to match. Right? Just mark them with pencil. So that when you come back to questions, you are very clear that where you are going to find that particular answer. So you can uh, just attempt RC like this. Anyway, envisioning, uh, look at this question, envisioning a development, developed India requires, so it requires development of core technological strengths, right, so if you just go through the paragraph very carefully, you can find all these answers, not very tough, right, move to the next question. <coughs> Differentiation between acceptance and non-acceptance of certain stimuli in classroom communication is the basis of, so it is basis of selective expectation of performance, okay. So this is all from teaching aptitude, so the, you, you might have studied all this in theory, so not very tough, direct questions. So this is again an assertion reason question. Initial message to students in the classroom by a teacher need not be critical to establish interactions later. So this is false. This is uh, derogatory to the idea of teaching. This is not what you do in teaching, right? Look at the uh, reason. More control over the communication process means more control over the what uh, over what the students are learning. This is right, right? If you just control the communication process, if you just plan your communication. And uh, say, uh, speak things that are critical to their learning in class, then you, you can control what the students are learning, right? So the correct option is going to be A is false, R is true, option 4, right? So the correct answer is option 4. <coughs> question 18. So this is again a social reason question. Just look at the first statement. To communicate well in the classroom is a natural ability which is false so this is actually an acquired ability you this has to be a learned ability this is not a natural ability then reason says effective teaching in the classroom demands knowledge of the communication process which is right so you have to learn this communication process okay this is a learned ability so a is false r is true so the correct option is going to be option four right next question Classroom communication is a transactional process, which is right, yes. A teacher does not operate under the assumption that students respond are purposive. This which is wrong, a teacher cannot operate under the assumption that students respond are uh, purposive, okay. It has to operate, so it operates under the assumption, right. This is a feedback system. Students' feedback is going to change the process of learning, affect the process of learning. So A is false and R is true, so the correct option is going to be option 3 for this one, right. Look at the next question. Which of the following set of statement is correct for describing the human communication process? So they are talking about human communication process now. Non-verbal communication can stimulate ideas, right. Communication is a learned ability, correct. Communication is not a universal panache, right. Communication cannot break down, yes, correct. More communication means more effective learning by student, which is not true. This, this does not hold true. More communication does not imply more effective learning by the students. This is wrong. Right? More effective communication or planned communication may result, but this statement is wrong. Value of what is learned through classroom communication is not an issue for students. Absolutely wrong. So the correct options are going to be A, B, C and D and the correct option is going to be 3. So the answer for this question is option 3.